Okay, so I got the new Bauer 10 inch sliding compound miter saw. As anybody who's watching any of my videos before, you know, most of the time I just do a uh, one shot and done. I don't script anything. So you know, we've got the shadow line cutting system, front bevel controls. Uh, according to the website and the packaging on the box, this looks like it's going to be a pretty good saw. So we're going to open this thing up, see what we got, and I will uh, give you uh, my opinion um, right off the bat. Then I'm going to cut some boards with it, and we will see, see if we can put this through its paces and um, just find out if this is worth more. Um, as you can see, I've got the old uh, Chicago Electric 10-inch sliding compound miter saw back over there. I've had it for years, cut hundreds of boards uh, with that thing. So we're going to see if this is worth the uh, extra money to uh, move up to the Bauer. Okay, so for the little side wing right here, we've got a nice little uh, notched groove and that slides in. We obviously got our little set screw right here. This is the first time I put it on. Normally it probably wouldn't need that tight. Uh, but I do notice here we have, um, it's like a set screw there. I guess maybe to tighten that up, um, we've got the fence extension on this side, so that looks good. This um, saw is in the locked down position. So we have just a um, little set screw there to lock it in and out. And we have just a little pin right there, and that brings the saw head up and down. Um, got a good, nice feel to it. The uh, marks on the back, back here, it's sitting uh, dead on zero right now. Again, you know, whenever. You rotate that I mean it's not a big gauge but I never trust those little gauges anyway so that's all looking really nice from edge to edge we're looking at 35 inches so we got a three foot bed um, these are nice machined aluminum tables um, and look at there that's a, a nice little feature so if we are cutting something let's see so that's about 16 and a half inches so a uh, little boards under 16 inches to nine inches so we it's a small range there but you can unhook that, slide this in, and got a nice uh, little small stop there for uh, short material. Um, it has the same thing on this side here. So that's looking good. Now, this saw does not come with the blade, which I actually prefer because that way you're not paying for a blade you don't want. And I believe a good blade makes the big difference. Now, to be fair, I'm with, uh, I got a brand new Delta blade over here. Uh, it's, I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, it came with one of my other saws. So I'm going to put that on here, to be fair. But I'll end up putting on a good Freud blade. I believe a good blade on a cheap saw will cut better than a cheap blade on a good saw. 
Um, the most important thing is going to be is if this is all true. So, so a little stop there. Um, that actually feels pretty solid. Let me rotate this down a little bit here. So you actually got, can rotate this down and then you got a little lock right there. So this little um, piece that flips up and down, now it is plastic. Um, I like this way much uh, uh, better than what was on the uh, Chicago Electric. It is um, pretty solid. Um, it would have been nice uh, if you can, you can see right there. See, um, so there's some um, little slop in here. It's uh, man, this is such a good idea if they would have just um, put something, uh, a shoulder bolt in there with a uh, metal piece or even a plastic piece that um, was a, had higher uh, tolerances than that. But, okay, well, there's my unboxing and my impression. So let me get a blade on this and get it mounted down on the stand. Oh, and something else that I did notice here, um, I haven't had this on any of my other ones, that this saw actually has, I don't know if you can see that, rubber, the, uh, no. so there's four rubber little stoppers right here. So, like I've got this just sitting on top of this uh, table saw, um, and now, like, uh, just grabbing, now that's not in any grooves or anything, that's just sitting on the tabletop, uh, which the uh, saw up here, the wheels are on. But um, just grabbing by this, I'm pulling my whole table saw. This thing uh, has a great grip. If you're just setting this up on a um, bench top or something, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bolt it down. But uh, most of them, I've never seen them that had the uh, rubber stoppers like that so that's another really nice feature all in all so far uh very impressed with uh, all the features i've seen on this saw okay so i just got the saw out of the box got it hooked up to the stand that way um, we can uh, test this thing out properly and safely i gotta say i really um am liking everything i see so far so, I'm going to stick this blade on it real quick. It looks like we actually have to have a screwdriver to take the blade cover off in order to replace the blade. Kind of kicked up like it might have slipped out of there. All right, all right. So there we go. That slips out. Oh, uh, so when I pulled out the Allen wrench, we got an Allen head on this side, but it's actually a Phillips on that side. So I didn't have to go get a screwdriver. Don't forget this is a left-handed thread, so righty is loosey and lefty is tidy. Too smooth, but not too bad. 
and it's the first time I fought with this particular saw. So, miter saws almost never have good dust collection. Now, I hadn't noticed this till I just went to put the blade on, but this particular saw, the uh, little dust port comes up and around the blade there. So, if you were to use dust collection, there we go, spindle locked. Uh, this probably would work pretty good for with a uh, dust collection. So the little Allen wrench with the Phillips, that's a great idea because I was just thinking to myself, it's like it doesn't do a lot of good to have the Allen without the Phillips, but I would still probably use a screwdriver when I was on a job site. So what the plan here is, I'm going to cut some boards and uh, everything is just like it came out of the box. Um, all the lines are dead on zero. So we will cut them and then we'll check the angles and see just how close this is to being square right out of the box. So before I get started, all right, let's just check the fence right here. So that is showing to be right at 90, dead on. Over here, I'm at 90.2. Um, that one there came up dead on 90. And that was dead on 90. Let me read. Yeah, I've got 90.1, something about right here on this side of the fence. I'm about two degrees. Oh, you know what? That may be it right there. All right, let's, let's check that. Well, if anything, I put it out more, so now we're at, uh, I didn't have the uh, slider part right here tighten down so when I tighten that down that had brought me up no, I'm still at 90.3 I mean we're less than a half a degree on this side this other side here is dead on so let's take a look at the blade here So that says that's 89.8 so everything I'm seeing just right off is um, within 0.2 degrees of being square but we won't know for sure until we cut some boards so I, I'm gonna hook up uh, it's not the best to run these off an extension cord there is a chart um, with your load and uh, the size of the cord. I've got a little 14 gauge cord here, which as long as we're not under full load and we're under 25 foot, which we are, we can do that. If you're gonna be going 50 foot or you're cutting you know, thick uh, two by 12s, two by 10s, um, putting this thing under a hard load, you definitely wanna get a 12 gauge cord. So this board here just happens to be 12 and a half inches, which is the maximum that this is supposed to cut. So uh, let's go ahead and make a few cuts. We're going to do the five cut method. Um, something that I noticed here 
Ooh, that's the first time I turned that on, but that um, that looks pretty good there. That shadow line. We'll have to see it in motion because I can actually see the carbide tips as they come down. Um, and that's nice because with the shadow line, it's also lightening up uh, my pri um, piece of wood here. So the trigger, you can't just grab. There's a thumb release. And then you have to pull with your finger. So there's a two-step safety on the um, trigger here, which, you know, safeties are fantastic as long as they don't slow you up and get in your way because then you take them off and throw them away and don't use them. So this looks like a pretty good safety. So let's make our five cuts and see what happens. All right, I'm pretty sure that was uh, five cuts. So this, if the saw is square, it should be the same thickness on both ends. Whatever thickness is off, we'll divide that by four, and that's how far out of square our fence is, or our blade is off the fence. Uh oh, batteries are going weak. 9.9.991. .9 9 so it was point so nine nine one nine nine one and the other one nine was nine point nine two. two. So it was <coughs> actually seven hundredths out. And then you would divide that by four, which is almost two hundredths out of square. All right. So I'm just going to double check, make sure I'm back zero here. So um, let's just uh, do a quick check right here on the mounting. Let's make sure I'm locked. All right, so that's all locked in. <laughs> Let's see what our angle here says. Um, 89.7. That's going to kind of go along with what we were uh, finding when I was doing the um, five angle, uh, five cut to check the fence for trueness. All right. And let's go. And check that one for square. Now that one is dead on 90. So um, which when we checked our fences, we were 90 there. So our side to side is uh, almost perfect. Um, we just need this fence needs to be adjusted just a, a fraction of a degree. So let me see if I can get that adjusted out and we'll come back in a second. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Um, take a few minutes and uh, try to get this square. So let's see what happens. four cuts so we're 0.48 and 0.48 that's what four cuts that means that um, you would divide the difference which we're in thousands so that's set up good so let's try some angles again and see what happens here. So let's go ahead and throw this on a 45. I'm going to use that shadow line. I'm going to... So 
So I'll put the saddle on right there and was wanting to split the uh, corner. So I did a pretty good job of splitting that corner with the shutter line. So now let's see how close to a 45 we are here. <clears throat> 45. So um, heck, let's go ahead and try some more then. Let's see. Um, 22.5 yep. Got a little carried away there, didn't go all the way in. So that was 22.5 which is off of 90. I got 60, well I bumped it, let me put it back. It actually come up. Uh, the first time I came up, it came up 67.5, 67.4. So it's close right there. You can see no gap, 67.5, which is the same as 22.5 off of the 90. Let's check the other side. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Uh, we're gonna go all the way over here to sixty. You know what? Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, that is a significant cut. Uh, most miter saws, I didn't even uh, realize this, will go from forty-five, maybe fifty. This one goes fifty this degree uh, side. And usually it's 45, 50 this way. This one goes all the way over here to 60. Make that 60 degree cut. Let's uh, double check it and see what our angle is. All right. So it comes up exactly 150. Boom. So uh, the 150 is off because we're, this thing is going to be reading 90 this way. So as we move um, 90 uh, plus 60 is 150. So that's why we're um, getting the 150. But this is uh, showing to be dead on now. I say it took just a little bit to uh, get these uh, adjusted here. Okay, so here's my overall impression. So I have probably made about 40 cuts on this thing now. Uh, you see the big old pile of wood up underneath there. Um, it's uh, everything's looking good here. Um, I had to get the fence squared. Uh, the instruction manual says how to square the fence up so just because it was off a half a degree um that's going to happen no matter what kind of saw you get um but it had the instructions on how to do it one of the great things was that the tool right here to change the blade was the same tool that it took to square the fence i've got this thing i have you seen me i've made multiple cuts all kinds of angles and every one of them are coming up um, dead on so these little detents um you know uh, that's your detent lock right here push that down and then that locks it in you can move it freely or you pop it out and then that locks in and that's 90 i checked about five or six of these you got 22 and a half all the way up to the 60 all those were dead on after I got it squared up. Um, now I don't bevel uh, my blade a lot, but having uh, this bevel lock here where you can unlock that and then rotate, you know, the, the saw um, is definitely very handy. Um, I uh, did check it 
once because uh, there's a stop uh, right here at 90 and that was dead on 90 um, right out of the box the um, shadow line so there's a little switch right here and uh, that's your on off switch for the shadow line and then what that does is that throws right where your blade is a shadow down and as you get closer you see it actually um, is it's the exact width of the tooth so I want to turn this on real quick but you see once the blade starts spinning it um because right now you can see the individual carbides on the teeth but once the blade is spinning then that actually I don't know what's a good way to get to show it but uh, I mean um, that shadow goes right there where that blade is so now you can't see it because the blade's been cut out um, definitely like that shadow line um, now this here you have to push this because it won't let you push your trigger unless this is pushed down so now it'll work. Um, but uh, so you have to have that so I did find um, this saw is not any good for left-handed people um, because there is no left-handed so you have to kind of use your pinky and uh, you know to unlock the uh, blade there um, really not the most convenient so if you're trying to for whatever reason um, you know cut off uh, a board and um, you're coming in on the right side here so you're holding the board with the right hand and then you're trying to um, you know, bring the saw down with your left hand that is the only uh, thing that I really found uh, that uh, wasn't jam up on here um, well and then the uh, depth stop here is a lot better than uh, pretty much any other uh, saw I have but it is plastic so there is just a little bit so I mean not much um, these are not really made for dados um, so I think that for a miter saw like I said that's one of the better ones I've seen um, you know out of the way uh, your uh, screw down and then lock it so um, that is good something I probably would never use you know I would just if I'm gonna do a dado I'm gonna get on the table saw but for some reason you need to do a stop on here um, that works good uh, we got these big nice tall fences um, you've got your actual um, the clamp here so it just drops in and then it wedges so that locks there um, so and then it comes right out so that's pretty good um, the nice little table clips here these slide in and out got your stop on them that way like if uh, you know um, you're on the stand I can't get to this stop because I'm doing a short board I can bring this out and then I can put that back in and then I can go to this one here um, you know so I could have even two different sizes of stop for short and a stop for long all I gotta do is flip this up so um, I mean it's only gonna be the distance from here to there you know so you're gonna have about you know seven eight inches of uh, adjustment on that but I mean that is still a way better side fence uh, than uh, some of the uh, the other saws there at a uh, Harbor Freight uh, for the $90 difference I can't see why anybody would want to go with the um, um, the old uh, Chicago electric over there so uh, you know that was a great saw for the price um, I can't tell you how many um, buildings I've built and I mean I put that thing through its paces and it's um, managed but this uh, Bauer is definitely a um, huge step up 
Um, I don't particularly want a, a, a 12 inch. I like the 10 inch. I don't need the extra weight. Uh, I'm not trying to cut through a six inch thick board. So um, if you're mainly, I mean, this thing will cut a five inch uh, molding straight up and down. So, I mean, it's got a, a good three and a half inch um, cut uh, vertical. So um, 12 and a half inch horizontal, you know, we, um, there's nothing else really that I can say about this other than um, I'm pretty much blown away. Uh, most of the time it's not that I complain, but I can usually find something that can be better. Uh, this saw here, um, being that it's one of the first ones out, uh, I was thinking that maybe there would be something and I am not seeing it. If there is, um, everything, you know, you, this is your, to go over 90 on your bevel, you know, that locks it at 90 and then you can tilt to the right if you want to tilt or to the left. If you want to tilt to the right and you pop that out and then you can tilt to the left <laughs> or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So, um, um, that's good because I was thinking, it's like, why is it there? But then that way, whenever I tilt it, I can come right back up to 90. I don't have to look, you know, I've got a positive stop at 90. So, um, uh, everything you see it, here it is. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got your wrench holder. It's even got your little cord. Um, I'm going to lock this down here, uh, where you can wrap your cord up here, the little hooks. Kind of like the old vacuum cleaner, you know. We can uh, put our cord up here. It's got the little uh, snap lock on the plug there. So that's nice and neat for transport. Man, um, for $200, $219, whatever it was, uh, I can't believe it. And then, uh, right now, I've just got a uh, just a cheap, uh, uh, you know, common blade on here. I'm gonna get me a, 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 a good blade, but even with this little blade here, I'm getting some pretty good cuts. Um, I mean, you see this pile up here on the floor. Um, there's a lot of sawdust, but I mean, this is some uh, fine plywood there with, um, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, birch or whatever it is, but, um, this isn't even a uh, plywood blade. This is just a typical kind of a combination blade. And it's, um, I'm having almost no chip out or um, this thing's cutting fabulous. So um, I guess I'm gonna cut it off with there because I ain't got nothing else to say. Um, I wish I kind of had a few, you know, things to uh, knock on it, but I don't know, I mean, that's not metal, that's plastic, but heck, uh, the stand here, which isn't Bauer, it's, you know, the, the catches on it are plastic. So, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, this is rigid and, you know, that's standard. So, um, but this here, this is metal. This isn't plastic. That's a, a good solid metal right there. Um, this handle here is plastic, but that's uh, metal good solid the finish on this everything you know is like precision ground on the table the fence I don't know it's got kind of a, a pattern to the way that that was ground but I'm assuming they did that for a reason we'll find out but um, if you get this saw I don't see how you would be disappointed uh, just be sure you know uh, get you a, a little angle finder here um, I like to have a micrometer. Um, when I first started woodworking, you know, I'd have a tape measure. I didn't even have a good tape measure, but um, um, you get your a micrometer and get this thing dialed in. And because uh, like I say, before with it being a fraction of a degree out, I probably would have never noticed it. Um, but then whenever I start building things, it'd be a little off. Um, with this and the instructions, I was able to get this uh, dead on. And so now I'll rotate this down here. You know, this stainless steel, nice and shiny, smooth. 
uh, good solid lock in the numbers maybe if i want to try to point something out the numbers are kind of small back there but that's just uh the way it is you know unless that was bigger you know there's no way to print those numbers bigger but um uh so i'm gonna uh go here and uh please drop me a comment tell me what you think uh, if you buy one of these come back put a comment down there and tell me uh, uh, uh you found something that was uh different um we do have the uh easy access for our brushes there there's our spindle lock um you know everything on here i said the the handle great for right-handed maybe if you're left-handed that's the only thing i can uh, think of that's a little tricky um, but you know safety is always a good thing and um, I just find it a little bit peculiar when I try to uh, pull that trigger with the left hand so I wouldn't necessarily call it ambidextrous but I was able to pull it with my left hand so until next time